I've been away for a while, but like Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé at Christmas, I have been resurrected, defrosted and returned from my cave to reveal the field to you for this season of BattleBots. Without further ado, let's crack on with this video. Three. We kick things off with Banshee, a new robot for this season of BattleBots. It is an enlarged version of Beetleweight Kelpie created by David Small. It's a really fun concept, the team have leaned into it heavily. David has a sword, everyone should be worried. We'll see how well this flipping rookie does when it comes around. Next up, we have the Hammer, the Hammer. Beta is back this season on BattleBots, and though the robot looks largely unchanged from the 2020 look, the team is somewhat different, with Jason Marston of Thor from Robot Wars taking over weapons controls. Also in the mix is Andy Hibbard from Rapid, an all-star lineup. Big Dill is in the main series proper after being a reserve last year. They return with a reasonably unchanged robot, except for that flipping great spinner on the front. Oh yes, this thing means business this time around. We saw what promise this new big deal has in the infamous chair fight last year. Long may it rain. Black Dragon returns reasonably unchanged, but some profiling changes along the way. A more flat front and this very cool armor setup that's been painted just beautifully. I really, really like it. The team, however, is ever changing as usual. What remains the same is Pato the Duck is back. Blip is back this year after flipping our expectations out of the water last year. This thing really did well, but their rookie season no more. They are a force to be reckoned with and teams are ready for them, I'm sure. Blip remains one of the coolest pieces of technology in BattleBots. Look out for them. Bloodsport returns this year and with a whole new look, looking a lot more like Ice Wave, I must say, with this top section, which now contains all of the weapon motors, etc. A whole system in that headpiece. This gives them more space in the chassis to play around with where everything goes, making it more ergonomical. It's a cool look. Captain Shredderator returns, and it is very much Captain Shredderator. It is one of the Captain Shredderators of all BattleBots, and it is certainly here. I'll be honest, I don't know what's new with Captain Shredderator, but they had an awesome fight against Tombstone last year, so let's see that version of Captain Shredderator again, eh? Claw Viper returns and this robot just goes from strength to strength, really. It had a really good season last year, though had a little bit left to be desired. Hopefully, they will be able to show off what this thing can do in the 2022-2023 season. Let's just call it World Championship 7, eh? This is a cool robot. Cobalt returns and... Though it's largely unchanged, no more Matt Maxim at the controls, he has stepped away, leaving a bit of a gap, and who should fill that gap but Cobalt's original owners, Dave and Sam, return for BattleBots, and this is their lineup to be reckoned with, I reckon. Copperhead is back this year and changing hands once more, now in the hands of Luke Quintal, who was on the team previously, creator of the Snakes, I believe. Though the team lineup has changed entirely, several Norwalk alumni, including Jonathan on the right there who created Billy, Lindsay from behind the bots, and Clyde Magnuson? It has been three years, and that was the length of gap between Death Roll's first appearance and its second. Death Roll returns this season in 2022, or for the 2023 season, I suppose. It is back, it is still very crocodile and the plan is still to point the red thing at the other robots and hit them. I look forward to seeing this thing in the arena. New robot for this season is Doom. This is one of the reserve robots, as it turns out, with an articulated hammer saw, if you will. There's some cool concept videos of this thing in testing and in uh, CAD that looks really, really cool. I look forward to seeing what it can do in the arena, looking sort of like a combination of saw blaze and beta. Another one of the reserves for this year is fan favorite Doomba, the chainsaw. Roomba. This is such good fun. This is another classic, if I ask somebody to draw a combat robot, this is what they would draw kind of robot, and I love those to death. We look forward to seeing what Doomba can bring to the arena. A third reserve in a row for you, this is Double Tap, a new team to robot combat in general. They saw it, they were in the audience, and then they decided to build one. This has some wild technology in it, including that spinning section on the front, and a self-writer that is Possibly too dangerous to run. Who knows? We will see. Emulsifier is here, and if you recognize this robot, that is because it was a £30 robot who has competed at Motorama, at 
Norwalk Havoc and now has been built up into a 250 pound fighting robot in the heavyweight division. It is such a cool design. Tracks and a vertical spinner is maybe the key to success. And speaking of success, a team that has many trophies in their cabinet. Endgame return this season, the 2020 Giant Nut winners and the 2021 Giant Bolt, Giant Golden Bolt, I should say, winners. This robot is always a force to be reckoned with, and it's very, very cool. Free shipping returns, and it's got a vertical spinner now. Oh God, look out, this thing is going to be dangerous. With Gary Jin at the helm driving once again, this is going to be an interesting fight for anybody. With every passing year, it looks less like a forklift and more like Original Sin, which should be a concern for everyone because that thing is a champ. Team Waiachi enter the fray with their two robots. First of all, Fusion here. The question on everybody's mind, will it go up in smoke again this season? We will have to wait and see. The outside of this robot looks much unchanged. The inside, I imagine, have been worked on thoroughly to try and get it to work perfectly. Derek Tran and Camden Woolraff take over the control of Gigabyte for this season. Still owned by a robotic death company, of course, they are part of the team, but they take over the driving and the captaincy in their rookie year. They have excellent help around them, though a veteran robot this is, so look out for them when they come around. Glitch went on a bit of a tear last year. Incredible to think that they have an 88% win rating. Seven matches won, one match lost. That is quite the record for a rookie robot. But once again, this is no longer their rookie year. And will people be ready for them? We will have to wait and see. Gruff returns this year, looking pretty similar to last year, but with a few internal changes along the way. Ones that I cannot remember at time of recording. One thing is for sure that things will definitely hot up in the arena when Gruff comes to town. Look out, there's a Gruff about. Hijinx returns once again this big owl undercutter with the big vibes along the way as well. Hijinx have been in the competition now for a few years. They've had their bugs along the way. They're hoping to have squashed them and come out the other side of it with some wins. We wish them the very best and vibiest luck. Speaking of vibes, here is Horizon, a new rookie robot for this year with some players who we've seen in the field before. This is of course one of our scaled up beetle weight designs with the two spinners at either end of the arm that also spins, it creates quite a powerful punch. It's another team that we wish the very best of luck in their competition. Huge returns for BattleBots World Championship 7 with their new S blade that they have there in the middle. It looks very menacing, I must say. We saw some design changes last year that proved fruitful in the end for Team Huge. Will that winning luck continue? We will have to wait and see. Hydra, the other robot from Team Waiachi returns. The bad boy is back. And oh boy, does this thing flip hard. Win or lose, I hope you've packed your parachutes for when you face the mighty Hydra. Because you're coming down, as Jonathan Pierce would say, with snow on it. This is your fanboy warning for I have just seen the new Hypershock and it looks reasonably unchanged to last year, which is a wild statement to be saying about Hypershock that changes year on year, but the design was pretty good last year. It hits hard. That is the main thing that we learned in the Sin City Slugfest. This robot really isn't just a pretty face. The home team Jackpot returned for their third season out this year with a new weapon system slash self-writing system, the front forks that can lift and raise, similar to how Whiplash does it, but not quite. Will this new self-writer be the solution to this robot success? I am so happy to say that this team did not retire after last season. Kraken returns for BattleBots World Championship 7, but it is a wholly new Kraken. Gone is the gas-powered crusher, now we have this spinning weapon that can spin downwards, it can spin upwards, it can hit over the top like a hammer, it's very cool. Lockjaw returned for this season and they're looking for blood, I think. After last season, they struggled hard. Will they come back swinging? I should hope so. This is a very cool look for Lockjaw as well. I'm really liking these new front forks on the front. And also, they've merged with Team Sub-Zero. We have Spitfire on Team Lockjaw now. I'm a firm believer that the golden age of Lucky has not yet passed. Finding a new driver last season saw some amazing fights for this robot and I think we're going to see some more awesome fights this season. The team also are very striking with their new hockey jerseys. I want one so badly, please put them up for merch sales. 
This is possibly the creepiest look for Mad Catter I've ever seen. It's so weird, I love it. It's amazing paintwork, and this is such an amazing robot, definitely not one to overlook. Mad Catter is a hard-hitting robot with a fast action driver in Calvin Eber. You will not want to miss out on this robot. Malice returns this season with front forks. Yes, they put forks on Malice, and after seeing them being tested at Remars, they work as well. What am I looking for in Malice this season? A little bit more consistency in their wins. They had a good season in 2020. They had a rough one in 2021. I'm hoping we see another upward curve. Mammoth returns for BattleBots World Championship 7. And I can't see the visual differences in this robot, but it definitely looks like Mammoth. Oh yes, this thing is still a force to be reckoned with, I think. It can still fling robots all around the arena and you should still be worried when you come up against it. Minotaur are back and out for blood perhaps? Who knows? Let's keep it civil in the comments anyway. The Brazilian Bull is always a welcome addition to the lineup for any season of BattleBots. It hits hard, it has an awesome sound to it and it looks very cool indeed. I love it and I look forward to seeing it in action more. It has been far too long. Monsoon finally return to the arena after their crate getting there last year, them not being able to travel. Monsoon returns to the BattleBots this year with a very new and far improved machine. This thing is tiny, but big things come in small packages. Ominous is a robot out of the Netherlands built by the creator of 2018 BattleBots Reality. Tim Bowen's new machine has three wheels or omni wheels so that it can strafe side to side, similar to how Shatter would do it. This is going to be a very cool robot to watch, I think. Grabby Bot Nation, Overhaul is back, rejoice, rejoice, etc. Do what you please. I, for one, cannot see the visual changes in Overhaul for this season. Maybe you can point them out to me in the comments below, but Overhaul is Overhaul at the end of the day and has become somewhat of a staple of reboot BattleBots. Quantum returns to BattleBots this year, and gosh, I'm so pleased because this thing still looks incredible. But as the team pointed out to me, its good looks are a byproduct of the fact that it is a functional skeletal design. All of the bits that have been removed for weight saving have been done in the most ergonomical way. It's just evolution. Rivot returns for this season of BattleBots, and they were on a tear last year, really causing some big damage along the way, all the way to the Sin City Slugfest finals and beyond. Can they repeat that success this year? We will have to wait and see as this team make their way to the arena once more. One of the cool newcomers for this year is Ripperoni, one of two robots from the new Omega team. We will get to see the other in a little bit. This is a very cool robot that employs several very awesome design prospects, including a counter-spinning flywheel inside the robot so that it can counteract gyro. Riptide returned this year and I struggled to see the visual differences other than the fact they've shortened the ears, put rollers on them and removed the forky bits from their photo last year that they never actually put on the robot. This is a based egg beater. I like a based egg beater. It hits hard. That's about all I can say about it. Rotator returns once again. Still gold, still shiny, still very, very cool. And Victor Soto still the master tactician that he is. This was a very cool robot last year to see and I think will be once again this year. Only going out to the eventual champions, so could go all the way perhaps. We will have to wait and see. Rusty are back this year and yes, they will actually be fighting. I hope. They are a reserve, so we will get to see their fight later on, I reckon. But so good to see Dave Eaton and Rusty back. This is a very cool robot and it has a toy now. It's got to live up to it. Sawblaze are back and they're one of the teams that I count as ever the bridesmaid, never the bride in the fact that they've come so close to winning BattleBots on several occasions and then just been beaten near the end. Witch Doctor is another one, of course. There is very much a monkey that this team, I'm sure, want off of their back. Will they get it there? Well, we'll see. Shatter returns this season and they've got some new weapons and some forks that look like they're going to hold things in place as they wail down on them. Oh yes, the original omnidirectional moving robot is here. I say original for BattleBots, I suppose. Bots FC balancing two robots this year. How well will they do? Pain Train has been taken to the smelter's yard. Introducing Shreddit Bro, the replacement robot for Team Shreddit. And this is the way forwards for them, I think. Four-wheel drive drum spinner. It's a very simple and I think very effective robot. 
You'll look forward to it. I look forward to it. We all love a bit of Evanarius in our life. Scorpios is back and in this photo showing off their new saw setup with the turtle back on it so that it doesn't start hitting the floor like it did in the Bloodsport fight back in 2020. Of course, the team will be running the usual arsenal of hammer saws, so look forward to more Scorpios. Slamo this season is unfortunately a reserve robot. It's a real shame because I think this version of Slamo looks absolutely awesome, and if you saw it competing at the recent Robotica competition, it was absolutely kicking backside. So, Slamo a reserve, unfortunate, but best of luck to Craig. Return of the Omega team, and this time we have Starchild. This is a big alien mutant on big wheels with a big spinny thing on the tail. Think Gabriel 2 with a spinner. It's very cool. It competes at Norwalk Havoc. It's one of the beetle weights that has been scaled up for BattleBots. I look forward to seeing it in action because it's always entertaining there. You'd be forgiven for not recognising Switchback, who have had a complete design overhaul this season, and it looks amazing. Completely different and awesome this time bringing an articulated egg beater into the competition. I look forward to seeing what this thing can do. All rise for the reigning champions of BattleBots, Tantrum. Returning this year looking somewhat different with a new armor package, a new weapon system. It looks very, very cool, very, very sleek indeed. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Team Seems Reasonable can bring for this 2022-2023 season, World Championship 7. Another rookie and unfortunately another reserve. Teratops here is a spinner with articulated lifter on the back of it that looks very, very cool. A Triceratops. Complete newbies who I'm told made none of the newbie mistakes. I look forward to seeing this thing in action. It passed safety on the first pass. Triton is what happens when you tell the Deep Six team that their robot is too dangerous for the battle box. Yes, they bring a giant, great, flipping spinner that is a horizontal, not a vertical. Their armor package does seem quite limited, but as Ray Billings has taught us, a good offense is often a very good defense too. A new look for Valkyrie under new captaincy. Lucy Dew takes over command of Valkyrie. Not only is she captaining, but she's also the driver, a very good driver at that, driver of hot leaf juice from Norwalk Havoc, among other competitions as well, a winner at many times over. As we know, Valkyrie was a force to be reckoned with before. Matt Vasquez returns with Whiplash once again. This robot is another one of my bridesmaids, never the brides, but is always entertaining to watch. This team have gone brushless this season, which should mean they go faster, they go harder, and they should be a force to be reckoned with. I think that disc is going back on. Finally, Witch Doctor are back this season, and visually, it doesn't look overly different, but there are major increases in weapon power under the hood. Look out for this robot because if you thought it was hitting hard before, you ain't seen nothing yet. And that is it. That is the World Championship 7 lineup for this season of BattleBots. Look forward to it when it broadcasts in January 2023. We haven't got long to go, so it's really, really close now. And there are some amazing fights this season. Can I just say, having seen it live, bonus points if you can spot myself, Steve the American Killjoy, or David Osmeg in the audience, there are some of the best fights, I think, of all of BattleBots in here. Maybe of, of the reboot for some, but I, I there are some astonishing fights that really blew my socks off, certainly. That's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do give it a like if you are new. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel as well as subscribing. Do subscribe. We like it when you subscribe. It makes me feel a warm, fuzzy thing inside. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe I should get that checked out. Am I ill? Anyway, thanks for watching and we shall see you again next time. And by next time, I mean when I have some awesome videos from behind the scenes of BattleBots coming in 2023 alongside the series releasing. Look out for them. It's going to be good fun. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye bye.